Things are going very badly for Black Lives Matter as the movement is crashing and burning and its leadership is abandoning ship. Um, also, it hasn't done any good for black people, if you can believe it. Or at least if there has been if there has been tangible good done for black people, it's literally a small handful of black people who happen to be at the top of the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, but anyway... A good example of this is this recent article um, by the New York Post that showed that actually black-owned businesses in George Floyd Square in Minneapolis, the area that has been consecrated to the memory of George Floyd, uh, where he died, uh, is it, they're failing. And they're failing because they have turned it into some kind of pseudo-autonomous zone and they don't get any help from the police or authorities anymore. And it's not good, basically. As they say... Uh, the, the merchants near the once thriving 38th, uh, corner of 38th Street and Chicago Avenue say police have abandoned the blocked off in section and created a dangerous autonomous zone that saw a crime spike and business evaporate. Uh, the black owned businesses say they've lost 75% of their business since the memorial sprouted up after his death. 75%. And they've, they've got a GoFundMe that they've launched to try and desperately stay afloat, but let's be fair, uh, the, let's be real, there's, there's no coming back from this. If, People aren't going to go to this area because it's now hugely dangerous. Uh, it's not like that's something recoverable. So it looks like they're just going to have to leave. Yeah, I um, mean, business isn't going to come back if it continues to be. No, so if it's not safe. Yeah. Shrine to yeah. lawlessness. Yeah, I mean, the merchants say that they feel that they've been sacrificial lambs in the city's response to George Floyd's death. This area has always been violent, but gang members kept us safe in their own way, which is really weird like Stockholm Syndrome sort of response there. That was actually part of the court case as well. The area being a violent area yeah. meant that a higher level of force was justified. Yeah. Uh, but residents and, bu residents and businesses complained that a new element of lawlessness has seeped in to the area recently with left-wing militants and gang members turning it into a volatile autonomous zone. So, some black people who definitely weren't helped by Black Lives Matter. And this uh, this came to prominence recently because there was, on the anniversary, the day of the anniversary of the death of George Floyd, there was a reporter who was trying to give a report. And, well, let's just watch the clip. This bill of comprehensive police reform uh, to be... Uh, to just got to be careful here with some gunshots. Excuse us, excuse us. It sounds like gunshots. I'll let you know what this is. These seem to be gunshots. So as you can see, everything's going great in George Floyd Square. I mean, this is what defunding the police looks like. Yes, this Shit, is... Where is that? We're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Just ranging gunfights in the streets, outside of memorials of George Floyd, uh, the savior of black. So we we can stop it there, John. I was, um, was going to mention. You, I don't know if you saw on the uh, George Floyd memorial there. They had a Pan African flag on top. Mm -hmm. What were George Floyd's political views? No idea. No one knows. He doesn't seem to be. I mean, that's one of the interesting things, though, isn't it? Like yeah. this guy who wasn't political by any accounts, well, no, and yet he's yeah. been mapped on. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, that I've there's seen no concern for what he thought. I've seen graffiti, you know, po paintings of George Floyd with Palestinian flags. I'm like, real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is this cursed image? Um, but yeah, so like, even when, and yeah, I love I the fact that this well, reporter, you can, you can start doing it with anything, couldn't you? Well, yeah. Why this not? Is just like George George Floyd for Juche or something like this. <laughs> Sorry, but I, lo I love the fact that the guy is trying to give a report about police reform and uh, you know defunding the police, and that just a gun battle begins behind him, and he has to flee. Uh, welcome to George Floyd Square. Uh, the the in the, as a result of this, well, only one person was shot, um, and they weren't mortally wounded or anything. But uh, it was unclear exactly what happened uh, as a bunch of gunmen just started firing into the square and. It says a local patrol shot back. I, I don't know what kind of patrol that is, but some people started returning fire. Just, you know, this is, again, this is what defunding the police looks like. Uh, another hilarious example of uh, people who advocated for defunding the police and then got their immediate comeuppance, the instant karma, was an Atlanta City councilman called Antonio Brown. Who, uh, who had his car stolen in broad daylight by a bunch of kids. He had voted to support an audience to withhold $73 million from the budget of the Atlanta Police Department, and uh, he was literally, like, 
<laughs> he paid for it. He was a car. No, no, he was a yeah. He was attending a ribbon cutting ceremony in an event at Northeast Atlanta, and he'd I guess left his car unlocked. And I think it was like three or four kids of the ages of six to twelve jumped in, and because it was a keyless car, they could just start it. And they drove off of it, and he's like hanging on the side, and he has to like leap off it eventually, and they just drive off with his car. And the thing is, he's like, "Well, I'm not going to file charges because I think they acted out of desperation. This is a generational <laughs> poverty issue." <laughs> That's right. Generational poverty just stole your car. Oh <laughs> you know? God! I mean, this is AOC levels of stupidity remember when they were, they were raiding an apple store yeah, yeah and then her response to being asked about these kind of riots was yeah well they're trying to get bread i was like <laughs> yeah, what? Exactly. what were those were those nike shoes i don't think that so it also reminds me remember there was um so like swedish politicians who some i think one of them had their daughters raped by refugees mm -hmm. and then the daughter announced that she didn't want charges pressed against the yep. rapist there was a norwegian politician who was raped by a migrant as well and he said the same thing he didn't want him deported because it'd be dangerous it's like dude you just got raped by this guy Anyway, uh, yeah, no, he's, it's a generational poverty issue. These kids at 12.30 in the afternoon, why aren't they in school? Why aren't we enforcing systems to ensure that they, if they are not in school, they're in recreational centres? Uh, where are the parents is the real question you want to ask, isn't it? Isn't it? But you can't, because that would be a conservative talking point, and you can't say that. Um, but the point is, uh, there'd be no police to enforce them anyway, would there? Because you'd help defund them. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, so what, what has all of this defunding of the police led to? Can you guess, Callum? Can you guess what defunding the police led to? Spike in murders. Absolutely. Which CNN obviously hated reporting because they've got literally like, I don't know, like six paragraphs before they give you the information in this article. God, I mean, look at that. Look at that headline there. Yeah. Defund the police encounters resistance as violent crime spikes. Mm. As, it, I like, I like the, as if the violent crime is one organization and the defund the police is another organization. And they're trying, but no, the votes are just always on the violent crime side. Just don't know why. But yeah, you, you have to scroll down a very significant way through this article to get the details. But I did so because I like torturing CNN with their own reporting. So Los Angeles cut its police department budget by $150 million. And I tell you what, if there's one city, I mean, maybe, maybe in Chicago or Detroit, but Los Angeles Angeles is definitely a place where you do not want to defund the police, right? Los Angeles has been a no notoriously violent city for decades, decades and decades, right? And so they, and being a huge city as well, they have 10,000 police, or they had 10,000 police until defund the police came along, and now they're below 9,500. Uh, what this means is a 26.5% increase uh, this year, uh, was it this year over uh, in murders, and that's a forty-four percent increase. Uh, sorry, in twenty twenty, and that was forty-four percent up over twenty nineteen. So nearly from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty, fifty percent nearly increase in murders. Defund the police. It's not just a one-off or a statistical error either. This is oh. across the country. And, and it, it's, a, it's a growing trend, mm. and specifically in Los Angeles as well. Aggravated assault is up 12%, uh, and violent crime is overall up, obviously. In Seattle, they approved a budget cut to police funding by 18%, and 39 officers quit or retired, and then the city saw its highest homicide number in 26 years, according to Seattle Post. I mean, that's what I mean by across the country. I don't mean in all the Republican areas this oh, yeah. is also happening. It's just, you know, a national thing. Americans are becoming more murdery. Well, it's like, no, the Portland, Los Angeles, these areas that have embraced left-wing ideology yes. to the extreme have become hotbeds of murder. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not Republican-run areas. I, actually, I don't know whether Austin, Texas is Republican-run. It might be. I think it's Democrat, uh, actually. A, I was like gonna, the, one, the one blue spot. I was going to say, I think it is actually with a sort of blue dot in Texas. Uh, but the Austin City Council cut its police department budget. Uh, after the protest, they, they lost 150 officers, uh, down to 1,680, and uh, there was, there's been a massive increase in the response time to, to shootings from police. Uh, in fact, one of them, there was a 16-minute response time to a shooting, and, of course, the Texas governor was furious about this. Austin is incapable of timely response to a victim shot in the head. Texas won't tolerate that. We're about to pass a law that I will sign that will prevent cities from defunding police. No surprise there. Based. Yeah. Uh, New York, of course... It's not good. It's just not good. So they cut more than a billion from their six billion police budget last year, uh, which obviously hasn't helped. And there has just been a massive surge in crime. It's just it, it's over the oh, just consistent over the board. It it's obvious what happens when you cut money to the police and you reduce the number of police. That is a green light to people who have criminal incentives and intentions and who are otherwise restrained by police forces. 
They don't commit crimes. So they're like, well, I don't want to get caught. Well, there aren't very many police. Oh, well, they won't get caught. And simple, right? And so this, what, what good has this done for the black community? Well, none, as far as anyone can tell. I can't see any tangible improvements to the black community. I don't know what statistics we could show that would show that things are getting better for the black community. But Black Lives Matter did raise staggering amounts of cash. So as far as I'm aware, this is 90 million in individual donations that uh, were a, what was the average donation? $30 were the average like individual donations made by the random public. They raised $90 million. I mean, that's a hell of a lot just randomly to raise because, you know, whatever. Uh, the the non-profit organization Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation revealed its finances for the first time, um, and they say that they have committed $21 million in grant funding to official and unofficial BLM chapters and black-led organizations, uh, but what's going on with the rest of it? I mean, that's a very small amount of $90 million, really. Yeah, that's a quarter of it. Uh, so what are you doing with the rest of it? And the problem is, lots and lots and lots of these small Black Lives Matter chapters are saying, well, where's our funding? And uh, it doesn't seem to have materialized. Interestingly, Corporate America pledged $1.6 billion to Black Lives Matter. Bank of America, $1 billion. Nike, $140 million. Sony, $100 million. Walmart, $100 million. Time Warner, or Warner Music Group, sorry, uh, $100 million. Google, $37 million. Amazon, $10 million. Really, Amazon? Only $10 million, Amazon? I think you can afford a bit more than $10 million, can't you, Mr. Bezos? Goldman Sachs, $10 million. Facebook, $10 million. Like... I wouldn't want any of these companies funding me. Also, just for a second, like, how many black guys could you hire for that much money? Huge amounts. And instead, you just give it to BLM or BLM-like groups. Yes. Who then, what, cause defunding the police, which then causes more dead black men. Yes. I mean, I, like, where where is the investment in black communities gone? And the thing is, what would you even do with it? What What's your plan? You know, the problem is, uh, like we've repeated ad nauseum and we're going to continue hammering this drum, uh, is breakdown of the family, which is why you have, yeah. literally, which is why you have kids stealing cars in the middle of the day and the guy going like, well, why, are they why aren't they at school? Yes, why aren't they at school indeed? I guess we'll just never know. But, I mean, um, like Bank of America, billion dollars. I mean, how many people could you hire? Just, uh, just <laughs> in, in random jobs or training? <laughs> nah, instead we'll just burn it. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just, I mean, who knows where any of this money went? Right. This, like, I have no idea how we could account oh, for. We've got the houses. Well, they, well, we get, we'll, <laughs> well, well, we may as well get straight on to that since you spoil it. Um, yeah. So Patrice Cullens, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter, as reported on Lucy's.com, uh, took the loot and ran. Uh, she told the Associated Press that she felt the time was right to move on from the organization. Really? <laughs> what is it about this timing that's so opportune and fortuitous? It's just the right time. I mean, I've created the infrastructure and support necessary, the bones of the foundation, so I can leave. And do what? I thought you were here to help black lives. And she, she came out and was like, yeah, I have helped black lives. Mine. How old is she? Uh, 37, I think. So she's got the rest of her life to do what? I don't know. Spend the money that she was given, I guess. Uh, but she, she, she actually went on TV and argued, uh, oh, well, you know, it's totally in line with my self-professed Marxist teachings. If I take loads of money and buy massive houses because I'm looking after my own. I'm looking after me and my family and my community. It's like, yeah, you are. But what about the rest of them? I thought black lives mattered, not just some black lives, you know, but oh yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, of course, she had bought four houses, one of them being $1.4 million in a white majority district of LA, as well as, as, well as several other million dollar homes, which is nice if you can get it. Time to retire? You've done pretty well. I mean, I, I would suggest this looks like her taking the money and running. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I mean you know, I'm just a cynical guy, aren't I? I mean, I also saw a listing there that they'd spent 15000 on, like, luxury hotels. Oh, yeah. So it's just like, okay. So it's all the, all the trips everywhere, anywhere. Yeah. Luxury hotels, first class. But, I, I mean, when you've been given $90 million in individual donations and then over a billion from corporate donations, 15000 on a few luxury hotels is nothing. I'm not even bothered. But I know, it's the capitalist element of it. Like, they're literally there in their top hats and suits. Oh, they are, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, I am a Marxist. <laughs> How did you know? It was the monocle that gave it away, wasn't it? <laughs> it's only $15,000 for this suit, don't worry. <laughs> incredible. Rock in the ocean. It's, it's just an, such an incredible grift. And I hope there are black people in America who end up watching this and be like, hang on, have we been taken for fools? It's like, yes, you have. You have been taken by fools, uh, for fools, by communists who have stolen your money and now set themselves up in incredibly nice areas. Uh, 
you're not going to see any of this. And this is what one Black Lives Matter uh, local chapter founder in St. Paul, uh, Rashad Turner, said. Uh, he has resigned. He's been with Black Lives Matter for a year and a half in his local area. And he resigned saying that the organization isn't concerned about helping black communities or helping improve the education quality in Minneapolis. <gasps> no, I can't believe it. What this massive grift that had gold poured into its pockets by places like Goldman Sachs don't care about black men. Wow. Staggering. Look, right. <laughs> L listen, right. And this, this will apply to later segments we do in this podcast, right? If corporate America is backing you, if they put up your signs, if they give your organizations money, you're not a revolutionary. You are not doing anything that threatens the power structure. In fact, you are clearly a smokescreen that allows them to carry on doing whatever they're doing and suppressing those things that are actually dangerous to their way of life and their method of organization. You are not revolutionaries at all, right? But anyway, this is what he it's, said. It's not even just banks. Like, weapons manufacturers yeah. were endorsing their <laughs> just, like, Was it Northam Grumthorpe or whatever you, what it is? Yeah. Like, they were handing out material within their organization of people who make bombs uh, of, of how to be a good revolutionary and also donating millions of dollars to BLM. It's, um, it's amazing. It's, it's <laughs> like they knew it was controlled opposition or something. Mm. Uh, but he says, uh, after a year on the inside, I learned they had little concern for rebuilding black families. They cared even less about improving the quality of education for students in Minneapolis. Now, I'm just saying, like, I, I reckon with, with, with only a tiny fraction of the money that Black Lives Matter raised in donations of $90 million, you could easily improve the quality of education in Minneapolis. You could, buy, you could hire good teachers, you could build good schools, you could use what is a massive amount of money, a huge war chest, to actually renovate the area and make it a livable place. Help people have some respect in the area in which they live. Maybe make them think, well, hang on a second, maybe the world isn't against us and maybe we can achieve something if we put our minds to it. Because I think most of the problem really is about motivation. And, in you know, um, sort of, yeah, you know, I just, I can't think of a better term than motivation, but I, it'll come to me later. So I've just Googled it. The number of people in Minneapolis is 420,000. Yeah. If you take that $1.3 billion and just give it to everyone in Minneapolis equally, I mean, that's over three grand. Well, okay, but that's a good way to ruin them. Um, <laughs> I know, but it's the thing of like, you it, it's so much money for such mm. a, a, a small thing here in which you're just saying like, you could help people in Minneapolis as he's asking. Like you could just hire everyone. You could set up uh, just yeah. businesses and just hire everyone yeah, who's exactly. unemployed. Set, set things up. Look, you got $90 million. What are you going to do with it? Well, we're going to, you know, build a community center. That'll be like $10 million or something. And then we'll pay for five years of staffing. That'll be, you know, however much. And then boom, go. Do that's five families you've just... Exactly. And, and just... You know, you, you're raising things up. But instead, Patrice has got a bunch of nice houses. So isn't that good? But uh, anyway, you know, they, they that was clear, that was made clear when they publicly denounced uh, the fact they don't care about education. was made clear when they publicly denounced charter schools alongside the teachers union. I was an insider in Black Lives Matter. I learned the ugly truth. The moratorium on charter schools does not support rebuilding the black family, but it does create barriers to a better education for black people, uh, black children. I resigned from Black Lives Matter after a year and a half. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, Epoch Times just give us a few statistics to go along with this. Uh, support for Black Lives Matter has, of course, plummeted from 61% last May to 48% now. A USA Today survey found that 36% of Americans would describe Floyd's death as a murder, down from 60% last summer. So uh, your boy Nelson did a good job in that court case, it looks like. Prove it his side. He did. Uh, and a poll in May conducted by the newspaper revealed that Black Lives Matter's call to defund the police has even less support with only 18% of respondents supporting it. I mean, the fringe of the fringe. The fringe. And I, I just can't get over, like, the, this has been like a six-year whirlwind, a political whirlwind that has raised up so much energy from the media and from just the institutions of society focus them in a single direction, raise huge amounts of money, and they have nothing to show for it. What has the black community gained from Black Lives Matter? If I was a black person in America, that would be the constant question I'd be asking. What has the black community gained? And the answer appears to be nothing. Four, Absolutely four houses. nothing. Yeah, four houses for Patrice Cullens and a bunch of high-class um, hotels that they stayed in. Possibly a few expensive suits. But, uh, oh, they also did get some Spanish equality stamps, by the way. So, you know, yay! Good job, Black Lives Matter. You got equality stamps that are actually a form of racism. Because uh, the light ones cost the most and the black ones cost the least. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even do that, right? <laughs> Who 
whose idea was this actually? I mean, like, as you know, I'm not even a part of this movement or anything like that. But like, obviously, you're like, right, okay, we're going to create uh, racial stamps. Okay, well, the black ones will be the cheapest ones. And what is that? Are they the optics we're looking for? You know, well, we'll make the white ones really expensive. Oh God, you know, <laughs> just I mean, it's, it, I, can't, I can't help but feel that this was done on purpose. Just saying, it feels like this was done on purpose. Uh, if you happen, literally, whites are worth twice as much as blacks. More than. Hmm. Okay. Okay, Spain. <laughs> God. Just, just saying, uh, we we've got nothing to do with Spain. All, all we do <laughs> disavow is disavow Spain. Yeah, we, we, I mean, we all we do is fight wars against Spain. So you know, that's all we need. <laughs> anyway, and uh, we we may as well give you an update on the uh, the shooter of Sasha Johnson, uh, black a British Black Lives Matter activist, as you can see from the picture. The shooter or her? Uh, well. She's black, but as you can see from the picture of the suspect, he uh, is a white supremacist. Uh, no, uh, no. Oh, uh, oh. What was that? He's a, he's a <laughs> he's a fatherless black youth from the inner city who's fallen into drugs and gangs and crime and shot her by accident while trying to shoot someone else in a raid on this house party in Peckham. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. What? Totally debunking the stereotypes, aren't you? God damn it, man! It's it. It's it's so transparent that all of this is a massive grift and nothing is going to improve. I mean, literally the conservative talking point. That's the thing. Yeah, you are literally the conservative talking point. And the thing black, is... Black it, crime, you know, gangs, is the, the thing you should be worried about. Yeah. Get well, shot yeah, by a black she, gang. Yeah, yeah. She, she gets shot by a black gangster. Uh, a youth gangster as well. You know, He's only 18. This kid's 18 years old. He shot her. He's going to have ruined his own life now. But the thing is, it's not like she's going to win Mother of the Year or anything. Uh, she, she's got two kids. What was she doing at a house party on a Sunday evening at 3 a.m.? Who's looking after her kids? What were you doing? You know, what were you doing that? What a complete degenerate you are to be doing that. Yeah. God. Uh, you know, she could have organized a babysitter. I don't care. Her. You know, like, like 3 a.m. on a Sunday, she should be at home. <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> The prophet of dadism has spoken. But but if she had stayed at home, wouldn't have got into this, would she? Wouldn't be in critical condition in hospital, would she? You know, I'm just saying prudence. But uh, I incidentally, she was due in court. Did you know this? She was due in court because she was facing prosecution for racially abusing a police officer. Not exactly. Uh. <laughs> not exactly good optics, is it? I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, we, we, we played the clips of, of Sasha Johnson in the past. Yep. I mean, really rotten personality. Yep. You know, saying the, the house ends need to be hung. Yep. The, if you're a man who disagrees with her and you're black, you're a coon. Yep. Her words. Uh, yeah, I mean, not, 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 not surprised. Vile person, terrible mother in a completely degenerate community. Mm. Just saying, you, uh, you are the example. You are the example. Um, but yeah, she was due to appear in court because she had racially harassed the police officer during a protest. And uh, enjoy those, uh, well, the um, anti-free speech laws, you know. Yeah, if this was America, you would yeah. be free, but... Uh, yeah, sorry. Not yeah, not here. We don't have freedom of speech. And you're not allowed to call white police officers names. Or it might have been a black police officer you called names. But either way, you're not allowed to call anyone names based on their race. Sorry, Sasha. I know that sucks for your activism, but I guess you've got bigger problems right now. But... Um, Anyway, there we go. Black Lives Matter. Massive grift. Hasn't helped the black community. All of their leaders are scum. And totally, total grifters. I just can't get over it. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.